Welcome to Cross Time. I'm sorry. Welcome to the Old Path Bible Study. Cross Time with Pastor Curtis is tomorrow morning where we'll be digging into 1 Peter again. Wonderful truths there held right there for us. And God doesn't hide the great truths of his word from us, but he does hide them for us to go and seek him with all our hearts and to search for his treasure more than we'd search for silver and gold the book of proverbs says i'm pastor curtis hutchinson glad you've tuned in with us whenever it is you found us on social media wherever whenever we're just glad to be here sharing god's word in truth which is always in its righteous context and that is the cross of the lord jesus christ uh, today we are in Hebrews chapter 11. This will be part 10 of this 11th chapter. Grab your Bibles, your paper, <coughs> excuse me, your pencils, whatever you need for class, for study. And uh, let's just hear the word of the Lord today for I know he desires to deposit his truth into our hearts and to guide us farther along into this great truth of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before we dig in this morning, I just want to make a little advertisement for my brother, Pastor Preston Nasal in Sydney, Ohio, who pastors the preeminent word fellowship there. And uh, he's got a new book out, His Blood, Precious Blood. I tell you, I've read several pages in it. I can't wait to dig in and finish it. You'll, you'll hear phrases like this, and, and so scripturally true it is. And this, this really will edify your soul and help you to learn how the focus of God is the cross of his son, the focus of God's word, who is God, is the focus of Calvary's cross. Listen to this. This, this is on page 9 of Pastor Preston's book. Out of the finished work of the cross comes the complete work of the scriptures, the complete work of the Spirit of God. It's a great, it's a great little jewel. It will bless you tremendously. His blood, precious blood, I'll tell you even how to get a hold of the book. You can write, are you ready to write this down, this address, Pastor Preston Nasal's address to order your book? Uh, he's only asking for a $10 donation for a book just to pretty much help pay for the little books. So if you're ready to write the address down, here it comes. It's uh, 629 Maryland Drive, M-A-R-I-L-Y-N Drive, 629 Maryland Drive, Sydney, Ohio, S-I-D-N-E-Y, of course, Ohio, Sydney, Ohio, 45365-1138. Send that $10 check, money order, cash, whatever it is, to this address, and he will mail you out one of these precious little jewels, and your heart will just overflow with great joy as you begin to see more and more clearly what God, what's God's focus is, that being the cross of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It will be a blessing to you. It already is to me, and I'm just getting started in it. Hallelujah. So, here we are in Hebrews chapter 11. Again, this is part 10 on this 28th day of July. Let's get back where we were uh, Monday morning here in the 7th verse. And look at this again. This is a tremendous and a very phenomenal verse that really portrays before our very eyes the way that really faith works and what it does when it is working, how it moves us. So let's look at this again, for I'm sure our Lord is going to help us see more clearly than we've ever seen ever before on this day. By faith, Noah, and everything we're about to read in this Bible verse is what Noah did by faith. Always remember, by faith means by the Spirit of God. Because if faith is working, that means the Spirit of God is working. The Spirit of God has offered the truth, and when we mix faith with it, the Holy Spirit is working in us, both to will and to do of God's good pleasure. Remember that. Where there's biblical faith, there's a working of the Holy Spirit, and the outcome of that biblical faith, which is always 
faith in the Word of God in the context of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Outside of that, my friend, we're just trying to do what the Bible says instead of the Holy Spirit doing in and through us what the Bible says. The only way we become a doer of the Word is when our hearing, watch this in this Bible verse, day, when our hearing is true hearing of faith, which moves us. Watch now. By faith, Noah being warned of God. Noah, by faith, was warned of things not seen as yet. Moved with fear. Noah, by faith, was moved with fear. We talked about that Monday. And I want to say this again. This is a powerful, eye-opening statement. When the Word of God is proclaimed, I don't care where it is, on the street corner, in the pulpit, it doesn't at the at the at the family dinner table, on the job, sitting around a work table. It makes no difference where. When the word of God is proclaimed, fear comes on the scene. One of two fears. When the word of God is proclaimed, the one who mixes faith with that word is moved as Noah was with fear into the experience of that word that he heard. If it's the fear of the Lord, when we mix faith with the word of God, we're moved with the fear of the Lord into the very experience of that what we've heard. Even if it's just an inner experience, it will have outer fruit. But when we hear the word of the Lord... If, we're not, if we don't mix faith, if we don't apply that faith, it's the faith of the Son of God that we live by, not just any old faith. He, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5 says there's one faith. It's the faith of the Son of God that loved us and gave himself for us. And when we hear the word of the Lord, if we do not mix faith with it, it's because that other fear the fear of man has moved us in a wrong direction. Let me say it again. When the word of the Lord comes forth, Sunday morning pulpit, Wednesday night pulpit, Bible study around the kitchen table, when the word of the Lord comes forth, fear is always present. And when those who mix faith with the word of the Lord, their faith is in the sacrifice of Christ and the Holy Spirit is able to teach and guide them into all truth. It's only because they have a spirit-taught heart. They're following after the spirit, which means their faith is still in the sacrifice of Christ, not, not anything else but the sacrifice. That way they can hear the spirit and that hearing of faith they began with, they can continue in with their fellowship being in the gospel, and the Holy Spirit can continue that good work in us. He began. But when we hear the word of the Lord, if we mix faith with it, then we're moved into the experience of what the word was but it's we're moved with the fear of the Lord. When we do not mix faith with it, we're moved with the fear of man, which is a snare. It snares us, paralyzes us, and it prevents us from experiencing what God has promised us. It must The word of God must always be mixed with faith when it comes, and it must be the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. That is the only faith that comes. It's not my faith and his faith. The faith we live by, or we're not living, the faith we live by, Galatians 2 and 20 says, is the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. 
When we read in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If it's not the faith of the Son of God that comes when we hear the word of God, it's not faith coming. It's flesh and carnal. And that's why we have all the divisions in the church and different demonizations, I mean denominations, uh, titled out there going all their different ways and there's no unity. And it's because we can't have mutual faith because our faith is really not all in the cross. It's all in these things that divide us. So when our faith is, the object of our faith is brought back to the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us, then we can see more clearly as to the things that have been dividing us. They've been dividing us because they have become our objects of faith. Let's move on this morning. By faith, Noah was warned of God. And by faith, Noah was moved with fear. That's the fear of the Lord. We know because he, by faith, Noah prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world. Do you understand that when your faith is in the sacrifice of Christ, that there is a condemnation being revealed there, that the world is condemned? We don't go out and tell the world they're condemned. The Word of God tells us that already. Jesus taught us that. I didn't come to condemn you because you're already condemned in John chapter 3. There is nothing good within the heart of man. When we're born, we are no good. And until we're born again, we remain no good. And no good thing can come from us even if we get together and say, oh, these are good things anyway and we're really good, it doesn't matter how many num how, how, how much the numbers are that pile up and the numbers of people that claim we're good, we are no good. God says we are no good, we are evil. And, and the best, on our best day, our goodness, our righteousness is still as filthy rags before God. The only unclean place, the only good thing is his son and what his son did at Calvary. That's why we must be found daily with our faith in the death of Jesus and walking with him in that faith because that is the faith we live by or we're not living. But look, the Bible says Noah prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Let me say it again on this broadcast today. Any fruit that's not the fruit of righteousness is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. They're one and the same thing. When you read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, and I brought it out in last night's message, you'll see that the new covenant ministry is a ministry of the Spirit. It's a ministry of righteousness. The new covenant ministry is a ministry of the Spirit and a ministry of righteousness. Put them together. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is the, minister, is the ministry of righteousness. And the Bible says that faith, that this righteousness we have is the righteousness of faith. Romans chapter 5 teaches that this righteousness we have in Christ is the free gift. It is the free gift. And it is what God had to see before he could justify us. God can't justify anything that's not righteous. That's you and me Initially, the only way he could justify us as being righteous is when he saw us in Christ through our faith in his death. And it, goes, it, and it remains the same. Any works that we're carrying out, any church attendance, any financial giving, any prayers offered, any worship, any, anything, if it's not by the faith of the Son of God, the same way we got saved, trusting daily in the death of Jesus, <clears throat> it's not being received of the Lord. To disagree with that is to not know the Bible. And it's what's wrong with the church today. They don't know the Bible. They know what it says, 
but they don't have that one common denominator, which is the only object of faith God has given us so that our hearing can remain intact as children of God and that our eyesight can remain intact and so that our, our receiving can remain intact. If you'll remember, the church of Sardis was told by Jesus uh, through the apostle John that they needed to repent and get back to the place they could hear and receive. And if they did, if they overcame, which means going back to Calvary, for there's no other overcoming place. Let me say that one more time. If they repented and overcame the things that were preventing them from hearing and receiving, which means going back to the cross because there is no other place of overcoming. It's where Jesus overcame all things and only in him through our faith in what he did in his death allow us to overcome. And he said if they did repent and overcome, then they would not have their names blotted out of the book of life. Now men will try to uh, rewrite the word and try to say all kind of things, but that's pretty scary to me and I'll take it just like it's written no matter what men say. If we come back to the cross we're going to be living in the hidden place, the safe place, the refuge that God intended all along. Our hearing will be right. Our receiving will be right. And our words will once again be right like they were in the beginning. The first time we believed with the heart unto righteousness and our mouths begin to speak unto salvation, while we don't hear the great gospel like we should, is because preachers' hearts are not believing under righteousness and God is waking up his church today though there will only be a, a remnant as always there will be a remnant awakened under righteousness just as Mo Noah not only became the heir of righteousness which is by faith but he had the manifestation of it I want to read a couple things to you here this morning I went and found these and and one of them is in Genesis 8 and verses 19 and 20 and th this is after the flood watch this now it is after the flood to prove what kind of man Noah was through what the object of his faith was because when God determines what kind of man or a woman, boy or girl you are, as, as, as he, he is looking at the object of your faith. Not what it used to be in, not what it was in one day, but what it is now faith is in what? The Bible says now faith is the substance of what your hope is in. The Bible says, Jeremiah, that our hope is, not only is in the Lord, our hope is the Lord. Amen. So watch this now, Genesis 8, 19 and 20. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creeps upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Do you know what kind of job that had to be? Let me read that again. Remembering there is one man, three sons, and, and these four men, their wives. Eight people. Eight people on the entirety of the earth saved because of this man's faith. Watch now. Verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. This is, this is faith in the sacrifice of a coming Redeemer. And took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. What a job. How long did that take? But it was irrelevant. What kind of work? I mean, all the, the killing of the animals, the slaying, the skinning, all that work, but that was irrelevant. What was relevant was what God desired. What was relevant was the object of Noah's faith and what was required of him to show forth that his faith was right. You see, in the Old Covenant, the promise was given. In Genesis, way back, even before this flood to Adam and Eve, 
that the promise would be that of the seed of the woman who would crush the enemy's head, though his heel uh, be bruised. And then the Lord would show Adam and Eve, and the devil was standing there. Get that. He didn't get it, but he was there. And this seed of the woman would come through an innocent sacrifice. Noah believed that. Is that where your faith remains today? When 99.9% .9 of the church doesn't want to hear anything about the cross anymore? I've been there. I've been there and thank God that he was able to get through to my heart and reveal to me what a waste every other focus is. Every other focus is a wasteland. Uh, we, we've been ridiculed and blasted and said, so, so the words even thee and 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 shall are about the cross, brother. We've heard all of that. So why are y'all preaching the old wooden tree? We've heard all of that. And I'm sure that had there been other people around, Noah would have probably heard, man, why do you think you got to build that thing? And it's always been that way. But there's always also only been a remnant who would simply keep their faith in the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. It's not changed today. Most of those who sing about the blood know nothing of the application of the blood of Jesus Christ to every word spoken of God. They don't know anything about it. Most would refute that that has to even happen. Most preachers refute, refuse that to be true. <clears throat> but we read in Exodus 24 that after Moses read the law, that they took the blood and sprinkled it on the word, the law, and the people, and declared, Behold the blood of the covenant that I've made for you concerning every word. He didn't say, behold the word of God. He said, behold the blood of the covenant. What are we to be looking at? The blood of the covenant. And we see it if we look into the what's written in the word properly. We'll see that God has sprinkled his word with the blood of his son from before the foundation of the world. And every word he's ever spoken, he tells us, is in righteousness, Proverbs 8 and 8. And his righteousness is only revealed in the gospel, Romans 1, 16 and 17. Do you get that? If every word God has ever spoken is found in righteousness, but his righteousness is only revealed in the gospel, and we only go from faith to faith as the righteousness of God is revealed to us through the gospel, nobody's moving forward unless the word of God is coming forth in the gospel context. See, that is a very powerful but true statement. No one is walking in the faith unless they're being moved forward from faith to faith as the Word of God comes forth in the gospel context. That's the message of the cross, my friend. Where the Word is not dipped in blood, it's witchcraft, it's voodoo, it's wishful thinking, it's a false hope, it's vanity of the imagination, it's pretend and make-believe. When the Word of God is not dipped in the blood of Jesus... We leave with nothing. We leave with nothing. And many would ask, well, what, what about before we knew the message of the cross for, for the ap daily application to live in victory and, and the only avenue through which the Holy Spirit works? What was going on then? All that stuff, most of all of that wasn't even God. There can be a form of godliness that can fool all of us, deceive all of us. We can have goosebumps and, and tingle all over and call it a move of God. We can all come to church on Sunday morning having just a great uh, uh, physical, uh, we all just feel good today, my goodness, and swing from the chandeliers and call it a move of God. A move of God is a move of on into the truth or a walk into the truth we already have. Where the, where the Word of God is not being sprinkled with the Word, where preachers just tell us what we ought to do and what we not, ought to not be doing, but, but the Scriptures aren't given and they're, not, and they're not dipped in blood. What do I mean by dipped in blood? We're not being pointed to the sacrifice of Christ through the Word of God. You can forget it, my friend. You might get happy for a few minutes, but when you get home, 
the deepest part of you is going to know it still ain't working for you. It still ain't working for you. The Holy Spirit only works according to a law. And that law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. And though we as Christians be in Christ Jesus, we're required for the experience of the new covenant, the experience of our Lord Jesus Christ, to walk ye in him. And just because I'm in him doesn't mean I'm walking in him. Just because I'm in the faith doesn't mean I'm walking in the faith. Just because I'm in the spirit doesn't mean I'm following after the spirit. All those things are true, and it's only faith in the blood. How does that work? The Word of God must be seen through Jesus as the living Word, and what He did is the Lamb of God. The only thing that saved Noah <coughs> was the blood of the Lamb. <coughs> it wasn't so much the ark as though God used the ark, but it was the object of Noah's faith that saved Noah. That's the only avenue of becoming the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Roman, I'm sorry, Hebrews 11, 7. Let's read this beautiful verse again today. And next Monday morning, we'll surely start here with Abraham. And there's a few verses about Abraham, and we'll dig out some of the precious gold there. But watch in this seventh verse of Hebrews 11. <clears throat> By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. And remember we brought out Monday how Jesus was heard when he prayed because he feared. Hebrews 5 and 7, if you missed it. But Noah also, when he was moved with fear... This fear of the Lord allowed him to experience the fruit of the word he heard, which was to prepare an ark, to build an ark, to the saving of his house. See, Jesus Christ and his work on Calvary's cross is our ark. That's how we get in Christ. That's through faith in what he did on the tree. It is our ark. Jesus Christ is our ark to miss the flood of wrath that the Bible says is coming. Quickly, it's coming. But look, it goes on to say, by faith Noah condemned the world. When he built this ark, he prepared this ark to the saving of his house, the world was being condemned. Through the, Noah was a preacher of righteousness, and I'll give you where that's written so you can write it down and look at it later. Peter wrote that in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, that the Lord spared not the old world. And he, he's not going to, hey, listen, he's not going to spare this world except for those who are in Christ. And he spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Might I ask you today, are you a preacher of righteousness? You don't need a church building, congregation, and a pulpit. A Christian really is a preacher of righteousness. Are you sitting under, in a local assembly, a preacher of righteousness? What made Noah a preacher of righteousness? He preached the righteous way, the way of a Savior, the way of a sacrifice. There was no other option. And all who rejected a coming Savior through faith in the sacrifice, they weren't spared. They were destroyed. It's coming again on a greater scale. The wrath of God will be poured out upon this earth again and all who are not in the ark of Christ through faith in his death. Not faith in Christ as a good teacher, faith in Christ as a healer, faith in Christ for the sacrifice of their sins so that they can be forgiven of their sins. Those are the people who are in the ark, who are in Christ. And as the preacher preaches righteousness, you can tell where the condemnation is because they begin to throw stones. They begin to laugh and mock. 
And they begin to say all sorts of things just like they did when Jesus was being crucified. Well, he saved others, but he can't save himself. Come down off the cross and then we'll follow you. That's what the world says today and, and the church is full of the world. If they'd stop just preaching the cross all the time, we'd follow them. If they st- and, that, and, that, and listen, that's, what many pre- that's why many preachers quit preaching the cross because they start losing people in their congregation and if they're not careful, what their real motive there will be revealed to them, the love of money or the love of popularity. When those things are, are only knocking on the door but can't get in, it'll be because the cross is being preached continually. Noah didn't have but one message. We don't have but one message. We have an entire book called the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but we've got one message that brings one faith about one Lord that makes that brings forth that one baptism. I'm quoting out of Ephesians 4, that ba- one baptism into the death of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Do you understand that? There's one Lord, one faith, one message and one baptism into the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Only one hope, and his name is Jesus, and that which he provided through his death is our only hope on this day for the will of God to be carried out. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you are involved in this Bible study? And I only could hope and pray that you would help share these Bible studies and let's embroad. Let's let's help. Let's broaden the borders of this great awakening under righteousness for God's people. For until we awake under righteousness, we're not going to see people added into the kingdom of His righteousness. God bless you. We love you, and we praise the Lord for you, every one of you. We're praying for you, and ask that you'd pray for us, that we'd stay the course, uh, that we'd stay determined and continue to set our face like a flint toward that place where Christ gave his life for us, and that we wouldn't move, and the Lord would begin to pour out even more illumination from his words that he's given us in the context of righteousness, which is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Don't forget about our website, thecrosswaychurch.com. Click on the store icon. Look at all the commentaries written there. You can avail yourself to those for a small little donation. And we thank God for everything that he's doing and for all of those of you who help us financially and prayerfully along this journey here as we March on to the finish line. You can donate to this ministry also, not only on the website, but through uh, texting to give on your uh, your smartphone. You can text the word give to the number 903-231-5950. It's for your blessing. Hallelujah. It's for your blessing because it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And you can try the Lord on that and find out that he's true every time. Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you. Until I see you Sunday morning. And oh yeah, Andrew will be here. We'll be tag team preaching. Both of us have pulpit. We'll be up there sharing the word of God together in the congregation. So tune in for that. It's going to be a special time this Sunday morning. Until then, God bless you. And stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and him crucified. We'll see you then.